and welcome back to my channel, Sakafet, Sakafet. Hope everybody is doing well. To all my subscribers, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're new to this channel, welcome, darling. So, guys, today we are back with another immigration video, guys. I know this series has been rather short. I was doing step by step with express entry, but anyhow, I was making these videos based on your engagement because you was interested in these videos. I made more of them. So if you are interested in these videos, you need to tell me in the comments to make these videos because that's not my usual content. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I feel need to make an update re-immigration for you guys because I think that there's a lot happening in this space. Okay, so guys. Basically, where I left off is after you've done IELTS and after you've gotten your ECA done, you then put in your express entry profile. Now, when you put in your express entry profile, at this point, you just fill out a profile online, you put in your IELTS test, you put in your ECA results and all the other information that they ask you. They're not going to ask you for any documents at this stage. I'm going to repeat that. They're not going to ask you to provide any documents at this stage setting up your profile you do not you're not required to upload any of your documents at that stage the only thing they require you to have is your IELTS results and your ECA results so you put in and you put in your profile after you've placed in your profile you then wait by wait I mean that every two weeks the government of Canada releases a draw. It's called an express entry draw. It's not like low to anything. It's just like a draw where they say, okay, everyone in the pool that is above a certain number, we're going to give them an ITA. That ITA is called an invitation to apply. Are you sticking with me? So your profile is in and you would have known the amount, you would have known your score. You should know your score because we've already done that in step one, finding out how much is your score and how to increase your score and so forth. So you want to check out that video. I will link it there. So after you have your score in hand, you know, okay, my profile is sitting on about, let's say 450 points, which is about standard. By the way, the draw ended the year 464, the lowest it has been. It's usually, it, last year it was averaging for 70 something around that. And that's high because when I got accepted, when I got my invitation to apply, my score was 454. And the score was still below that. The draw that I, I got an ITA for was still below 454. But over the years, people are doing all sorts of things to improve their scores, like learn French. They're doing all sorts of things. And so that's why the draw is much higher. Nonetheless, I have good news. So let's get back before the good news. Let's get back to the profile. So you've got, um, suppose the draw for this week is 450 points and your score is 455 or 451. If your score is 451 or anything above that draw, you're going to get an ITA from the government of Canada. Now, that ITA is called an invitation to apply, as I said early on, and you then start your application process. At that point, you're now required to prove everything that you claimed in your profile. So if when you were creating your profile, you said that you had a bachelor's degree, you now have to show your degree. Like you have to show your degree certificates. Um, you have to get all your documents at that point in time, everything. You have to get employment pay stubs, bank documents, everything at this point in time this is where the application comes down you understand now after the after the application you get everything done they are going to request medicals from you and medicals are done by a specific doctor and they will let you know which doctor in your area you have to go by to get these medicals done in dominica there's only one doctor that the government of canada um approves medical from you get police you need a police record for anywhere that you've stayed in more than i think 12 months or 10 months it was something like that anywhere you stayed in more than 12 months you need a police record for this so at the time i needed to get a police record from saint lucia i also need to get a police record from dominica you understand these are the places that i stayed during for a longer period of time so i'm telling you i had to travel to saint lucia to get it just a police record get yourself ready in your mind to think about that 
if you stayed in a place for more than 10 months, 10 to 12 months, I think, I can't remember, you're going to require a police record from that place. Now, obviously, COVID restrictions has, has made it extremely difficult to get anything from another country. It could be IELTS, it could be a police record. So the process, the application process is a lot harder right now because for some people, it's just too much restrictions. You understand what I'm saying? I know for a fact Canada has slowed down on applications, ex on permanent resident applications because there has been there have been complaints in the news of people saying how the application is slow to process and whatnot. But you have to understand it's because Canada is still on the lockdown. When I'm making this video right now, we are still under a stay at home order. It's not even just a lockdown. And so they are delaying applications. You understand? No. The fact that they're delaying application just means that the pool is going to get wider and wider and wider. But it does not even matter if the pool is getting wider and wider and wider because the immigration officer, the numbers, the, the targets, this man is trying to hit for immigration. Hunty, I know for a fact, it's like I just have a feeling that the scores are going to drop. Just in February, they announced that if you had a score of 75 or above in the CEC route, and CEC is the people that's already in Canada, like students that are in Canada and they have completed their degrees and they're working and so forth. If you're in that class and you're in the pool and you have a score more than 75, an ITA. 75 is just point for some people age. That's ridiculous. The, to drop it to 75? Like what? That is just alarming. That is just, that is just, what? This is mind blowing. It's, it's never been done. Never heard of. Nobody would have thought they would ever drop the score that low. And yet still it was dropped that low. Then Canada government comes around with Christmas again. Recently, they announced that they're going to give 90,000, 90,000 people permanent residence and they're targeting international students that graduated as well as essential workers in healthcare and essential workers in general so if you worked all throughout covid and you were cashier or whatever it was that you never stopped working you can apply for pr without without the income without the income requirements because you know normally express entry has income requirements where if you're one person you need to show a bank account of at least twelve thousand canadian and if you're two persons it goes up and so forth you could check the income requirements for express entry but for ninety thousand people they do not need to show that and that is a blessing i mean that's gonna be that's going to be a huge blessing for a lot of people. And I'm really happy for all the people, you know, all the essential workers at the government, you know, remember them and choose to give them such a valuable gift for they and their family. Because obviously, if you get PR, your spouse get PR, your children get PR and so forth. You know what I mean? So it's very, very, it's a blessing. It's a huge blessing for a lot of people. You understand? So... For all international students that are in Canada and you have graduated, you can for sure apply for PR starting May 6. As well as um, all essential workers, cashers, and I will link down below so you could check out the article and check out the jobs that qualify as essential work under that specific category. Now, seeing that people have already gone ahead and book out IELTS in Ontario. The centers are booked. The site has crashed. I really don't know. Here's the thing. I notice a lot of the IELTS centers are closed. They are not open because of COVID. So for example, UTM has an IELTS test center and it's closed because of COVID. Now, if the government makes such an important announcement, they should have known that People are just going to do the ads to get a chance to get their application in. So they should kind of give some leeway to the um, IELTS centers to open up the majority of IELTS centers. Because right now the site is crashed down. You can't get an IELTS date for probably till November. It's ridiculous. Whole of Ontario, there's no IELTS test centers. Like what? Like 
you just announced you're giving 90,000 PR. What did you expect? What did you expect? You need to ensure that there's 90,000 IELTS spots available for these 90,000 people that you're announcing. You know what I mean? But anyhow, I think that they mishandled that situation and that's why right now to get an IELTS test is extremely, extremely, extremely rough. It's just rough. I think they need to open more IELTS test centers given the demand has gone up. Now, to the people who are outside of Canada, so that's extremely good news for people inside of Canada. To the people who are outside of Canada, my advice is get your profile in. By the hook or by the crew, get your profile in. I understand it's extremely difficult to get IELTS done. I understand that there are so many restrictions. You understand? And for a lot of people in the Caribbean, Trinidad borders being closed is not helpful because, again, we only have two IELTS test centers in the Caribbean. Jamaica and Trinidad, which I, on this to this date, I just don't even understand. How that makes sense, given the demand, Trinidad is always booked out. Jamaica is this this test centers are all these test centers are always booked out. If there's the demand, then open up in another spot. You understand what I'm saying? And much closer to the to the Windward Islands. You're sending us far up north and far down south. Like seriously, put a test center in the middle of the Caribbean. You know, somewhere central, St. Lucia, Barbados, Antigua, somewhere central, even Dominica, like, yeah, why not? You know, I know we don't have an international airport, but so what? Like just put test centers in closer areas have more test centers but in any situation i would say get your education assessed that could be done online you don't have to go anywhere to get that done and then ensure that you get ielts done as soon as you that borders open ensure that you book your test and get ielts done you might even want to book before the borders open because if you do not i am i am so certain you won't get a spot it will be booked out instantly it's just ridiculous like that when i was doing it just two years back three years back it was it was like ridiculous to get a spot like i had to call all the time to see if someone cancel it was just bad so i would advise you to book that and get that done that, that's just my opinion guys that's just my opinion now once you get your profile in as soon as soon and i say as soon as soon as the government of canada start back their, their releasing of processing for PR, your profile is in. If they take any sudden decisions, like the ones that they did for inside of Canada, you're in the bag. Guys, once you're in, then your chances of getting an ITA is obviously higher than if you're not in the bag. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I would say, because of the numbers that the immigration officer is trying to hit the chances of the draws dropping is very high i think the numbers are gonna drop i think they will drop the numbers on purpose i think they will increase the amount of ita's because they're trying to hit a certain number that's what i think but guys hey that's just my thought but i'm saying if i was in in my situation two years back, I would definitely try to ensure that I get into the draw by every means necessary. So guys, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and you found some value in it. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment down below, guys. Like the video. You need to share the videos and like the videos. And most importantly, hit the subscribe button, guys. Hit the subscribe button and show your girls some support. If you have like any specific questions or you have like a private situation, feel free to message me. You know, add me to Instagram, private message me. I will respond to you. I'm not that type of person, like I will respond to you, you know. So, guys, thank you guys so much for watching once more. Hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you on the next one.